I'm going to show you guys four methods on how to factor a trinomial. And the trinomial that we're factoring is this. 4x squared minus 5x minus 6. And we'll be factoring the same one with all four methods because this is how we can be fair with all the methods. And after you finish watching the video, please comment down below and let us know which method do you like the most. And now, let's look at the first one. This is called the AC method plus grouping. And this is how it goes. First of all, we have to make sure that the expression is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. This is, so that's good. We have the ax squared, the x, and the term with no x, right? And now let's identify the abc values. Right here, the a is just the coefficient of x squared, which will have 4. And the b is negative 5. And the c is negative 6. And now, on the side here, let's draw a big x like this. On top, we are going to put down a times c. And this is why the name is called the AC method. We are going to multiply a and c together. a is 4, we will multiply with negative 6 for the c. 4 times negative 6, we get negative 24. And then down here, we will put down the b value, which we know is negative 5. And now, this is the part that involves the guess and check, okay? We have to now come up with two numbers so that when they multiply together, we will get negative 24, and then when we add them up, we get negative 5. Let me give you a combination first. Let me put down negative 12 times 2. Does this work? Well, let's see. Negative 12 times 2, it is negative 24. However, when we add them up, negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. We are looking for negative 5. So this is not the correct combination that we are going to use. And you have a few more to kind of just try it out, right? And if it doesn't work, then just kind of cross it out and try the other. The correct combination is going to be negative 8 times 3. Because when you multiply right here, we do get negative 24, right? And then when you add them up, negative 8 plus 3, we do end up with negative 5. And now this is how we are going to utilize these two numbers that we found, okay? Originally, you see right here, we had a trinomial. I'm going to break it apart into a four-term polynomial, okay? And this is how we do it. We are going to keep the first and the last term, so we'll write down 4x squared, but then for the middle term, instead of the negative 5x, well, we just saw that negative 5 is the same as saying negative 8 plus 3. We will use these two numbers to break that apart. I will rewrite negative 5x as negative 8x. This is still the x term, so be sure to have the x right here, okay? Plus 3x. Just do this real quick. Negative 8x plus 3x, we still have negative 5x. So they are the same, right? At the end right here, we have that minus 6. And now, did I make the situation worse or better? In fact, it's actually better. Because even though I have 4 terms now, but whenever I have 4 terms, what can we do? We can do grouping, right? And you see, this is why this is the AC method plus grouping. Because now I can group the first two together and then the second two together. Okay? For this part right here, 4 and 8, we can take out 4. x squared and x, we can take out x. And let me put down parentheses for the leftover. Originally, we had the 4, but it's out already. x squared earlier, but we took out x, so we have an x left right here. Minus. 8, you can think about this as 8 divided by 4, we get 2. This x is out, so this is what we have for the first part. And then for the next one, right here, let me write this down again, okay? So we have to be sure to put down whatever this sign is, right here, before we do anything else. We have a 3 and a 6, we can take out a 3, right? So let's put down a 3, and then we'll open the parentheses, 
we have the first term, the x is the left over, minus 6 divided by 3, we have 2. And now you see, both of this have what? x minus 2. So, we can take that out, x minus 2, and then we multiply with this, 4x plus 3. And we are done. And this is the AC method by grouping. Perhaps this is the most standard way that you'll see in a lot of textbooks. And now let's check out the other one. For the second method, we still have to do the AC part. And in fact, I don't know what's the technical name for this method, okay? So I would like to just call this the lazy AC method. And you will see why. Anyways, we go to the same thing. So right here, let me write it down. We know a is equal to 4, and b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to negative 6. And on the side, let me just draw that big x. On the top, I multiply a and c together. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24, just like what we did earlier. And down here, we put down the b value, which we know is negative 5. And then we still have to do the guess and check. We have to ask ourselves, what times what will give us negative 24? And together, they add up to negative 5. The correct choice is going to be negative 8 and positive 3, right? And now, this is how this lazy version of the AC method works. And let me just make a small remark. I don't really have a right to put on equal sign along the way, okay? So, this is how I'm going to show you. I'm going to put down two parentheses, because I know if I want to factor a trinomial at the end, I will end up with a binomial times another binomial, right? And we are going to First, write this down as, well, that's the a value is 4, right? Put down 4x, and then put down 4x, like this. And you may be wondering, you are getting mad at me already, because 4x times 4x is 16x squared. We don't end up with 4x squared, right? Don't worry, I will make this work for you. And this is why I say, I don't have the right to put down equal sign along the way, okay? But the way to do it is, you write down whichever this number is, you do it twice. That was a 4x squared, you put down this 4 twice. So that's how I put down the 4x and 4x. And the next thing that you have to do is, you put this and that down right here and right here. And once again, the order doesn't matter. So let me just put down negative 8 here and plus 3. And now what? Well. This is wrong at the moment, and this is how we can make it right. Look at the first factor. We have 4x minus 8. Let's look at 4 and 8. Can we reduce that? Yes. We can reduce both of them by 4. I can divide this by 4. I can divide this by 4, isn't it? And at the end, you see, 4x divided by 4 is just x. And then the minus is in between. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So this is what I mean by reduce. I have a common factor for 4 and 8. If I reduce it, I'm not factoring out, okay? And for this one, can we do the same? Well, this is 4 and 3. No common factor. So just leave it as how it is. 4x plus 3. And I have the right to go from here to here and put on the equal sign. And this is the answer that we got earlier. The lazier version which you didn't need to do the grouping part. So perhaps you guys will like this more because some people are lazy. For the third method, it's called the slide and divide. And thanks to Professor Churchill, he's the one who showed me how this method works. So that's how I can make this video for you guys. Anyways, you see that we have 4x squared minus 5x minus 6. And you know the hard part is that we have a 4 in front of the x squared, right? So this is how it goes. We are going to take the 4 and then we're going to shoot it, and then we're going to multiply with the negative 6 right here. And once again, for this method, we don't really have a right to put an equal sign along the way. We can only do so at the end, and let me show you, okay? So I'm just going to multiply, and you see, I took the 4 and multiply with the negative 6. This 4 is not there anymore, we will just have the x squared, okay? And then I will have negative 5x, 4 times negative 6, that's negative 24. And just imagine if these are two different questions on the test, which one would you like to do? 
this one right because it's easier because we just have a 1 in front of the x squared and now can we factor this yes it's much easier I would like to draw two parentheses this is just x squared so we know it must be x and x right here and now what times what will give us negative 24 and together these two numbers will add up to negative 5 well once again it is what negative 8 and plus 3 right this right here is it for that but this is not it for the very original and this is how we do it what was the number that we used earlier that we shoot it over there it's the number 4 right the a value 4 and this is what we're going to do right here we took the 4 and we multiplied it there and now we are going to look at this we are going to divide it by 4 look at this and divide it by 4 okay and now you see x is just x minus just a minus 8 divided by 4 we can divide right so it's just x minus 2 that's the first part and for the second part right here we have x plus 3 over 4 it's a fraction that's no good and you know what we're going to do we don't like fractions 3 over 4 we take the 4 and then shoot it here and you see we will have 4x and then plus 3 right here and that's the second factor and now I can take this and tell you this is equal to that that's it and these are the intermediate steps right here you slide and divide I saved the method that I used the most for last and in fact this is also the method that I use to teach my students and I know some of you guys after you finish watching the video you may be fascinated because we have so many methods to factor trinomials right but I also know some of you guys may be frustrated because why bother with so many methods to factor trinomial well the idea is that you should pick one method and learn it really really well and use it really really well and by the way comment down below let me know which one that you like the most this right here is called the tic-tac-toe factoring so right here i am just going to draw the tic-tac-toe box right here for you guys and this is how the tic-tac-toe method work first we are going to think about how to fill in these two boxes and to do so we have to ask ourselves what times what will give us 4x squared and this is hard because we have choices we may have 2x and 2x right we may also have 4x and x i don't know which one is correct yet so right here let me just show you guys one combination let me put down 2x and 2x this is going to be wrong but let me just show you this one right now okay and right here we are going to fill in these two boxes now we have to ask ourselves what times what will give me negative 6 well we have choices again 1 negative 6 negative 1 6 2 negative 3 negative 2 3 I don't know which one I should use right so let me just put something down for you guys let's say negative 3 and 2 I don't know if this will work out okay or not but now this is the place that we can check I am going to multiply the 2x with the 2 I cross multiply to check and you see 2x times 2 that will give us 4x isn't it and then I'm going to take the negative 3 and multiply with 2x that will give us negative 6 I'll put it down here I told you guys this is not correct because now you see in the middle 4x minus 6x we get what together this is negative 2x too bad I'm sorry because we're looking for negative 5x so you know this is not correct okay so you're going to cross this out but it doesn't mean that this was not factorable it's just that we make our wrong selection earlier and the idea is that we just have to do it again so let's see so now I'm going to draw the tic tac box right away and this time I will show you the correct combination and sometimes you have to just Put it down and then try it out and then check to see if it's the right answer or not right here i'm going to put down 4x and x because when you multiply i still end up with 4x squared right here right and this time let me put down negative 2 right here and positive 3 here 
how do I know this is correct? Because I cannot multiply this in my head. Because now I show you 4x times negative 2. This is negative 8x. And then I take the 3 and multiply with x. That's positive 3x. And you see, negative 8x plus 3x together we do end up with negative 5x. And that's what we want. Yay, look at that, right? So this is the right combination. And the best part about this method is that you know if you're doing this right or wrong because you're checking the answer along the way. And you also work with when you have more variables. For example, if you have negative six y squared, you can also make sure things work out the right way, okay? But I'll do that in the other video. At the end, you know you have done the hard work already. Remember, this is how you're going to write down your answer. You are going to read the answer across this and that. So this right here is going to be 4x plus 3. And once again, the order doesn't matter. I will put down 4x plus 3 and then x minus 2. Just like this. Okay, this is the answer. You read the answer across. But then earlier, we did cross multiplication like this. This times this, then put it here, and this times that, and put it here. We cross multiplied it to check. So, four methods, which one did you like the most? Mm -hmm.